Welcome to the Soul Full Podcast. I am your host, Megan Harmony, a champion at overcoming the tough stuff and enjoying life while rising above it. Soulful living means getting to a place of ease and comfort, no matter what's happening around you. It is waking up excited about what adventures you will go on. It's connecting to the power within you as your source of strength, grace, and security. It's being uncomfortable during growth spurts and leaning into the stretch. Each week, I will share with you about my journey and the experiences I have had. I'll offer you hope and inspiration that it is possible to live a full life even when the you-know-what is hitting the fan. I believe that love is a language we can all understand, and I want to inspire you to trust and believe in yourself. Your soul is hungry for more. Lean in to get soul full. Hi, family and friends. Your card readings for this week are as follows. All that glitters, essential meanings for this card, a need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not, chasing after every sparkly new thing, being mercurial. The Oracle's message, it's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it sparkles, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, a big house, a title or position, the stamp of authority or the sparkling of a diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place or thing. Or do they? The truth is that people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the masks people wear and the motives underlying them, including ourselves. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire the object or person? Relationship message. Sometimes we try to become something we're not to impress others. We embellish a story a bit adding some dramatic elements to make us more appealing. The real person becomes hidden behind the sparkle and shine. Then there are times when we don't see the true value of someone else because he or she may not have the glitz and glamour that seem so desirable. Now is the time to look past the surface, beyond the mask, to the essence of a person, who that person is, not what he or she has or can give you, is important. See beyond the glitter and look for the inner glow. Use the eyes in your heart. Let go of artifice and let what is authentic shine. Prosperity message. Sometimes an opportunity looks so good that it glitters like gold and you just can't resist it, especially when it appears others are doing so well and have hit the mother load. During the American gold rush, everyone hurried west to find their fortune and then deserted in touch entire towns after the mining depleted the gold veins in the earth. So too can you deplete yourself as you chase after the latest shiny thing that has caught your eye. There is a mercurial quality to your present circumstances. Pay no attention to those who chase after fool's gold. Resist the temptation to be jealous of others. What they have achieved may not be the true success you seek, so don't compare yourself to them. You see only the surface right now only the sparkle. Be assured that you will experience your own shining moment if you stick to what you know. All that glitters may not be gold for you. Protection message. This is a signal to walk away from what you're contemplating. There is a thin veneer of glitter and sparkle that masks something rotten underneath. Pursuing it will only bring about a difficult situation you will be sorry you got yourself into. Stay away. Isn't it wonderful how spirit protects you? Better Things Await. And that's from The Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed And the next card is from the Archangel Power Tarot cards by Radley Valentine. And it's the Five of Michael. This situation doesn't serve you. Release your attachment to the outcome. Consider taking a more uplifting approach. Five of Michael. 
This situation doesn't serve you. Stop and reconsider if the actions you're planning are worth your time and energy. You may very well win the day, but there is a strong possibility that there won't be much to celebrate in the end. Ask your angels if there are other, more uplifting paths you might follow. There is a lot of negative energy coming from the people involved in this situation that doesn't match your vibration. Archangel Michael can help you vacuum away all that negativity. Consider releasing your attachment to the outcome as too draining. Make more optimistic plans. Even if things didn't turn out the way you'd hoped, value what you've learned and try again with your improved information. Additional meanings of this card are that you're experiencing negative thinking, you have wasted energy, or you have a need for greater self-awareness. And the last card today is from the Louise Hay Life Loves You deck and Robert Holden as well. And it's, I am worthy of my own love. Write a love note to yourself. What is it that you most need or want to hear? Put this in a note for yourself. And if you really feel called, mail it to yourself. I have done this before and it's a beautiful experience to receive it in the mail and open it as if it's a letter from a dear friend and it's words of love for yourself. So I hope those cards serve you. They're all kind of telling us the same things and we'll get into that in a few minutes in this week's episode. Let's talk about the moment of clarity. What I'm talking about here is the moment when divine inspiration comes and you awaken to a pattern of behavior that no longer serves who and how you want to show up in the world. Have you ever found yourself responding to an event in a way that is different from how you used to react and thought, wow, I really have grown? Or have you been in a situation where someone says something to you that pours salt in an old wound? One I might add, you thought you had healed and you react with a vengeance. Then later in the day, that moment of clarity hits you like a two by four to the head. Ew, I don't want to behave like that. I'm not that person anymore. How do I grow through this? That's the ever pressing question when we're on a spiritual path. How do I grow through this? What can I learn from this? I've stopped asking myself that one though, because I don't believe the universe or God gives us lessons or punishes us. I think of these situations as opportunities for growth and expansion to the next level. So when the moment of clarity hits you, what do you do about it? You have two options. Stay awake to the behavior you want to change and ask for the strength and courage to show up differently. In other words, remain awake to this newfound information or fall back asleep to it and just keeping on, keep keeping on as before. There's a bit of a problem with this second option though, because once you become aware of something, it gets uncomfortable to show up in that way. Let me give you an example here. You catch yourself mid yell at the most important person in your life, the one that you love the most, be it your kids, your lover, or your siblings. You're yelling at the top of your lungs, or maybe you're not yelling, but you're just arguing over a mundane point and you notice it. In that moment of clarity, you can continue yelling and arguing or stop yourself dead in your tracks and say something to the effect of, I don't want to treat you this way. Something in me is reacting. And I'm going to pause for now because you deserve better. Then walk away. If you continue yelling and fighting, it is very uncomfortable. Like crawling in your skin, icky, uncomfortable. Because your soul has let you know this isn't who we need or want to be. And you are ignoring the still small voice. So what does that voice do? It gets louder in that moment. If you continue to ignore it and keep acting out of alignment, your soul gets quiet again because it can't be bothered to force you to change. Then you fall asleep to the awakening again until the next time you are screaming at someone you love. And each time you wake up to it again, it becomes more and more unbearable each time you do the undesired behavior. These behaviors vary from person to person 
and awakening to awakening. They can be things like jumping from one relationship to another in order to not have to be alone. Seeking self-worth from the partner on your arm. Throwing fits when things don't go the way you want or wish. These are just a few of the ones I have become woke AF to over the, the years and made the decision to transcend to become the most vibrant expression of myself. But Megan, how do we awaken to behaviors that are no longer serving us, but have become almost habitual or instinctive? The answer to this may seem simple, but can feel difficult because our fear-based mind uses these behaviors as an attempt to keep us safe and doesn't want us to let go of them. But the way to awaken is twofold. One, ask God, the universe, and your guides to show you the things you need to release that are keeping you at a lower vibration. Then, two, pay attention to how you are showing up in the world. Watch how you are or aren't interacting with other people. Sometimes you will notice it in the moment. I call this a God punch when you just know you shouldn't have said that, that way, or you didn't mean to act like that. It often hits you right in the gut, like a punch, and you just know to watch for that next time. One recommendation for the rest of the time is to spend a few minutes at the end of your day reviewing your day. I do this with pen and paper because there is a connection between written word and cementing the idea into the mind. Look through your day and check your motives or reasons for doing the things you did. Were they self-serving or others serving? And when helping others, was it because of what you would get out of it? For example, I used to date guys who didn't have cars. Then I would drive them to work because, and I say this in quotations, how nice I was, unquote. But in reality, when I woke up to it, I was driving them in return for them loving me. I have to check all my motives. And when I do this review at the end of the day, I become awakened to ways I get to expand how I show up in the world. Try it out. Check in with yourself at the end of the day and see what you wake up to. So far, we've discussed the moment of clarity signs and symptoms and how to awaken to them. Now I want to share with you a few steps you can take when the clarity or moment of inspo hits to literally rocket you into the fourth dimension of existence. One. When you notice yourself acting in a way that you just can't stand anymore, ask at once for it to be removed. You can yell it out. You can say it in your mind. However you feel most comfortable, just ask for the behavior to be removed. I should preface this by saying, once you know the behavior exists, there's a surrender to attain your highest vibration. You have to surrender it to a power greater than yourself because If you of your own power could stop it, you would have already. So whenever it shows up, ask for it to be removed. If the behavior is a thought pattern that is no longer serving you, such as I'm not good enough, you can say something like, God, I refuse to believe this delusional lie. I know I am loved, supported, and more than enough. Obviously, change the ending to be the positive opposite of the thought that is troubling you. Step two, have full faith that your highest vibration is supporting you and trust that the universe and God are backing you to shift from what was the next level. Step three, the next step is to talk to a trusted spiritual friend for some outside input about how you showed up in order to really awaken your brain to how this behavior is no longer serving you. You will want to advise your spiritual running mates that you may be calling them to give you a solid dose of truth when you make these calls. They might be able to offer you a perspective you hadn't even thought of yet. These insights can be nuggets of gold in the transformation process. Step four, if you caused any harm through your choices, words, and actions to anyone else, set it right. If possible, go see them face to face, but if unable to do that, call to let them know you don't want to treat them that way 
and ask them how your behavior made them feel. This also will give you a reminder in the future of why you don't want to show up this way. Step five, turn your thoughts over to others who need support and help. When I reach this step, I turn to praying for people who I know are in pain or suffering. And if I can't think of any specific people, I pray about situations happening in the world where support is required. You can also pray for groups of people who suffer, such as anyone with a health diagnosis or suffering from addictions or alcoholism or anything of that type. We can add to that list ad infinitum. Praying, of course, from the position of not asking for a specific outcome because we don't know what is best in the world, but asking for the highest good for all involved. When we turn our thoughts over to thinking of others, it raises our vibration and can literally shift things for other people, which is a change from the lower frequency actions that started this round of of steps. Step six. This one is an important one. Go easy on yourself. Don't spiral out here for far into low vibration thoughts about what a horrible person you are for having these behaviors or asking yourself, what is wrong with you for showing up that way? You are a glorious soul having a human experience and these behaviors, even though sometimes painful, like the time I woke up years ago chasing my daughter up the stairs while yelling at her because a wound had been triggered. This is all part of the soul's journey. I needed these awakenings to continue to reach my highest calling. We never stop growing. And to be honest, I don't want to. Because once I've elevated to the highest place I am meant to expand to in this lifetime, my time on this earth will be done. Plus, I love these moments of clarity. They even excite me because it means I get to shine a little brighter and love myself a little deeper. Relish in the growing pains. They don't last long. Step seven, continue on with your day, watching for the behaviors, but not being hyper-focused on them. Find ways to increase your joy. And if the behavior shows up again, Repeat steps one through six. Always remember, whatever the question, the answer is love. We need only decide to step into love and choose to have the fear overcome by that love as the two cannot coexist in the same moment. As you start to awaken, it might be a little scary. Find a community of people to lean on when fear crops in who will remind you of love and will encourage you and support you. I've started a new Facebook group, Soulful Awakening Society. That's soulful, two words, S-O-U-L space F-U-L-L Awakening Society. Come join us in there for weekly inspo and incredible human beings raising their vibration. When you join, send me a private message so we can connect. I look forward to seeing you in there. You can also find me on Instagram at Soulful Sobriety or Megan Harmony TLC. Sorry, Soulful underscore Sobriety or Megan Harmony TLC. Tag me in your stories with a screenshot of this episode so we can get hooked up. I hope you have an absolutely fabulous week. I'm sending you so much love and light. Remember to lean in to get soulful. Until we meet again, lean in to get soul full. Thank you for meeting me soul to soul today on the Soul Full Podcast. If this episode connected with you and you feel called to, please share it with your friends and family so they can feel the love as well. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe on your podcast player so you get notified when new episodes drop. Please leave a rating and comment so I know what's touching your soul the most and can bring you more of what you long for. If you have suggestions for topics or would like me to speak at your event, please connect with me at S-O-U-L-F-U-L-L-S-O-B-R-I-E-T-Y at gmail.com. 
Thank you for your love and support in helping me connect with more souls to remind them they are divine, capable, and loved. You're the best. Go out looking at the world through the lens of love.